Hello dear friends, this is Ewell Humphreys again on Bible Reflections, about a five or ten minute message. I want to speak to you on this moment on the subject of some ways to live the Christian life. Ways to live the Christian life. Oh, I couldn't say all of them, but we'll certainly touch on some important things that will help us to live the Christian life. Bible says over in James, in the fifth chapter and verse uh, Verses, uh, verse 8, Be patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is drawing near. Be patient. Oh, be patient, dear friends. It won't be long till Christ is coming back. It won't be long till this problem is going to be solved. It won't be long till this sickness will be healed. It won't be long till you find the answer. So, be patient. Be patient and establish your heart. Put your life in the hands of the Lord as best you can. Believe in God. Read the Bible. Seek His face by prayer. These are the ways we live for Christ, the Christian life, because He's coming soon. The coming of the Lord is drawing near, so we need to be ready for Him. And this is some way we live, as to so live as to, to be ready for His coming. And is coming soon. The Bible says over in Acts, in the tenth chapter, uh, uh, the twentieth chapter of Acts, Paul is writing to the church there, and he says to the people that are Christians, he said, "I'm going to have to go to to uh, Jerusalem, and I don't know what faces me except trouble and bonds and persecution waits for me." But he said, "None of these things move me, because I count not my life dear to myself." but that I might finish my course with joy. Now here's one way we can live a Christian life, and that is to learn that we must seek the way of God instead of our way. We must learn what it means when he said, Deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. Paul is saying here, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I'm going down to Jerusalem, and I don't really want to go if it was it was up to me because there's nothing that waits for me except trouble and persecution waits for me. But he said, that's all right because it's God's will for me to go. This is part of my ministry. Holy Spirit's leading me to go to Jerusalem. I'm going because it's His will. You see, the way to live for Christ is to learn to do it His way instead of your way. And when you pray, you must learn not to just pray for everything you want but to pray for the things you believe that He wants. We must learn that our life must not be counted dear to ourself, but is counted, but, but that we might finish the ministry He's called us to, and that's to live the Christian life. And so, when He said, I count not my life dear to myself, He said, I don't live a life of common sense. I don't live a life of kind. It didn't make common sense for him to go down to a place where there's nothing there but trouble waiting for him. But you see, he said, I count not my life dear. I don't build my life on common sense. I build it on faith in God and the word of the Lord and the direction of the Holy Spirit in my life. And that's the way I want you to live, the Bible says. Jesus is saying to you right now, I want you to live like that. I want you to start living according to the faith that you have in me and trust in me to lead you and guide you by the Holy Spirit rather than trying to do everything you can and your strength by common sense. Trust the Lord and He'll help you. This is another way that we serve our God. Another way is in five, First Thessalonians 5.18 uh, In everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ concerning you. In everything, give thanks. And so it's important. Paul is saying, I'm going down now. I'm going to find trouble and persecution. But he said, I count not my life dear because I want to finish my ministry with joy. And so you see, when you're thankful for everything, even for the bad things that happen, even for things that you don't understand why they've happened, if you can find it in your heart to say, thank you for it, Lord, because you said thank you for all circumstances because they're working for good somehow, and God's going to work it out. Oh, we need to see this. We need to see that God's going to do it for us, and He's going to do it because He loves you. 
He loves you very much. And we need to learn how to live for God by trusting Him. So remember, remember, look for His coming. Oh, look for His coming. Be patient. Be patient. And seek the face of the Lord in prayer and reading your Bible. These are the ways to live a Christian life. It's to deny self and turn to God and let Him have His way to go His route instead of yours. It'll not always be what you want to do, but if it's what He wants, it'll end up far better for you and for others, and it'll please God. And the Lord will bless you. So be thankful for everything. Be thankful for even the problems that come in your life, because there's a purpose for them, and God's working it out. Thank God for every blessing that He gives you. Oh, and there are many blessings He's given you. He's forgiven you of your sins, healed you of the sickness, and crowned you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Walk with the Lord by faith in Him, and you will find that it pays to serve Jesus. These are some of the ways to live the Christian life. Amen. God bless you. Pray a brief prayer with me, asking God to come in your heart if you're not sure that you're going to heaven and that you're a Christian. Pray a prayer like this and say, Dear God, please forgive me. I believe in Jesus. I believe He died for me. I believe He rose again. I believe He's coming back. Come in my heart. Help me live for you as the Lord of my life. Oh, pray that prayer. And then find you a good church. Attend that church and be baptized if you need to be baptized. And let the Lord direct your life and keep you close to Him. In the name of Jesus.